Um, what this plot is, is an exaggeration of the mouthpiece held in this orientation. So what we're looking at here is the tip opening exaggerated way out there. It's currently 92, and that's 90 and 100, and, uh, so that's 92. The little gap between the bottom axes is the tip rail thickness up, and up here is where the reed would sit on the table. So the reed would be here. So uh, that's why uh, I said by looking at this flat spot here that around 15 on the mouthpiece, it's a little flat there. Um, so uh, first thing I would do, the, uh, the table on this mouthpiece is also um, not totally flat. Uh, I take uh, a feeler gauge that I know is flat. I flattened this myself years ago, place this on the um, table, and you can see light shining underneath it. So this heel is high right here, which is very typical of uh, most Babbitt mouthpieces. So the first thing we do is we um, flatten the table. Um, I have uh, my coarser sheet of sandpaper here. I'll take a pass on that. I'll show you that the scuff mark we get. We get a scuff mark here, there's a light scuff mark here, and a scuff mark there. Those are the high points on this mouthpiece. Most of it is here. I'm going to lean a little bit on this uh, because uh, that way I could take off the least amount of material to get the uh, table flat. And you can track your progress by looking at the scuffs and the sand marks on there, on the uh, table. So we still have a low spot right around here. Everything else is cleaning up. How you hold the mouthpiece and your pressure is, is pretty important. You can bias your wrist uh, down um, you know, a three finger, I guess, hold is what I use, and you can press more with your index finger or less. Different tables require different uh, techniques. A concave table like this one isn't that tough because uh, you've got contact here and here that you're, you're bringing those areas down to get the table flat, but um, a convex table can be a lot of trouble because uh, now you're, you're often teeter-tottering on one high point in the middle. So, um, I think they're difficult. Some people say table flattening is not rocket science, but uh, I don't think a rocket scientist could do it. Okay, after uh, getting about 90% there, I switch over to my fine sandpaper. And that's cleaned up. It's pretty much... And it's probably made the facing curve shorter all the way up to here because that's where the flat stops. And um, even though this was a 49 length before, I can guarantee you it's not anymore. This now sits down at 46. So it got a little shorter. And there's probably a kink there because that's flat and then you know this curve is going to fall off so it, it's not playable um, you might get a sound out of it but um, you know just flattening the table is not something you can do by uh, alone you'll have to blend in these edges but uh, right now even the tip opening is different I like to use this uh, machinist depth gauge to get tip openings What was once 92 is now down to about a 90, 90 and a half. So we took off, you know, a thousandths to a thousand and a half off this table, about the thickness of this feeler gauge. So it's not a lot of material, um, and uh, the benefit you get from removing that material is well worth it. So I'm not going to measure the facing curve yet. I'm going to start roughing in the facing. Oops, hit my tripod there. And let 
those are two full passes across the rail because I know that we were short. I'm going to now start biasing mostly my uh, cuts from 40 on. Uh, a white marker is very useful. You can get these at craft stores. Um, mark the piece. I used to try to use a pencil, but these show up a lot better. So I want to go from here on out and start taking, taking material off. Okay, you can see how the, um, the tip rail is widened up. We have um, some room there that now we can shape the end of that tip. Because once you shape the end of it, as long as you have enough uh, material to work with here, you shouldn't have to work on it again. So that's what I'm going to take some time out to do now. I uh, pull out my favorite file and I give that an eyeball where I need to take material off. And it's right up here. Different reeds cuts do have slightly different tips, but the way this tip was here, it wouldn't fit any reed well. So you can use your favorite cane reed to get the shape that's close to what you're using. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Um, I also, in addition to files, I have uh, sandpaper on some wood, pieces of wood, and they're a nice way to do more finer adjustments. And also have a two, I have two grits, and this is a finer grit. So you can see also the uh, side rails are getting a little thicker, and that will continue to get thicker as we open the piece up, uh, I think. Um, it depends on how tapered the inside, I mean, it, it, the body is tapered, it's curved going away from the facing, so when you lower the facing now, they down, they get wider from the outside. Um, if there's some taper on the inside, then they can get wider from the inside, but if you cut into where they're curved, uh, as you lower this rail, you can actually get a wider and wider window. That's when you shouldn't be opening a piece that much. These have flat side rails for a good sixteenth of an inch, so um, that's the room that we have to work with, and we shouldn't need very much of that. So after we get the uh, tip rail um, shaped the way we want, um, later after we get it open to where we want it, we can thin the tip rail from the inside and that will give us um, the opportunity to shape the baffle how we want it also. So I'm going to do a spot check on a couple feelers now. Um, my largest feeler should, an 078 should be about an 8 if I'm close and that's about a 6. Like say my 49 should be about close to an 18. That's 16 and change. So we've still got room to open. Uh, let me check some of the longer ones to make sure that I'm not close to overshooting anything. So this 10, this should be 39. That's at 38. So we're still safe by a full number on the gauge. If you notice your one rail is higher than the other, you can bias how you're you know, jamming the rails into the sandpaper. Okay, I'm going to take a full set of readings now that I've done some rough cutting to see where I'm at. Um, I may pause the video if this gets too long and cut some of this out. But I'll show you some of this. 
So I'm lining this up. There's rails, vertical rails on the glass gauge that you can use to center the piece, and I'm eyeballing where the zero is right up, up to the edge of the new tip. Change, changing your tip rail shape will also change your zero point, so that's something you, it's easier to do at, right at the beginning so that now you have your new baseline and it stays the same throughout most of your reshaping. So, um, let me prepare my spreadsheet. And this first one, I call that a 49 to a 48. 49 on the left, 48 on the right. I have this uh, keypad over here that is wireless that I'm entering the numbers in. Um, 5 thousandths gauge, I'm getting 43.8 and 45 and a half. I mean 43 and a half. This is the most tedious part of the refacing, whenever you got to stop to take measurements, but it needs to be done. 33.9 even on both sides, 28.9 even, 18. If you're watching, the curve is changing uh, as I type the new numbers in. So um, I'm now working on 63 gauge, which was 10, has now grown to 12.1. And the 78 is now 7.8. And I may have opened it enough now that I can pick up the 93 feeler and take it, yes I can. And that equals 2.3, 2.4, we'll call it 2.5. So I need to uh, go modify my spreadsheet a little bit to get that point plotted. scratch area down at the bottom that I needed to modify. And now I remeasure the tip opening. Probably won't be a huge difference, but the tip rail is much fatter now. So I'm getting 092, which is where it was, but now with the wider tip rail, which I measure with, I use a magnifier. down here and stick my face in it until I can see where the calipers are. It's 073. That's a huge tip rail. 0.073. Uh, and sometimes you, you get some zigzags in there, but we'll fix that as it fix itself rather as we get closer. Um, so we're pretty darn close to target. I've even it looks like I've overshot it slightly here, which I didn't want to do, but I can flatten the table another half a thousandths or so and that may come down. Or the other thing I can do is I can actually recalculate the curve and make the curve maybe a little flatter than I than than the target curve. Minor change that um will still play well without me having to um take a lot more material off so that's what we're after so I'm gonna flatten a little more towards the tip it's only a little crooked back here right now it usually doesn't come in quite that quick but once in a while you get lucky